Got some monster news. Well, I mean, not quite monster news, but in the Halloween spirit, I got ESPN Plus and I have it through like Verizon. Any real so anybody who has Verizon, I guess, gets ESPN Plus and like all these other the Hulu and stuff like that for free. And I didn't even realize this. So yeah, gotta go take advantage of this. And I'm like, well, we get a heavy dose of Mel Kiper this season or Jordan Reed. Unfortunately, Todd McShay's not with ESPN anymore. So I'm hyped up, man. We can do some ESPN mock the mocks this year. So without further ado, let's take a look. Jordan Reed from ESPN. He's doing a first round mock draft. I've not taken a look at this yet. So there might be some surprises. I hope to be surprised, man, in a good way. <laughs> let's go on to the Bears, though. They're picking Caleb Williams. Not a surprise. I mean, Caleb Williams. I mean, some Bears fans are like, no, please. And then the other fans, you know, it's like 50-50 right now between Caleb Williams for the Bears. And it's kind of funny because I think Caleb Williams is... I know he's had a couple of bad games. However, I still think he's the top prospect. I mean, this guy's got all the talent, the arm strength at all different angles. And on the run, is just so impressive. He has that Patrick Mahomes level of arm strength. Now, does he have the work ethic? Does he have all those intangibles that Mahomes have? Those are all question marks. I mean, who knows, right? Mahomes is, you know, a one-on-one guy. And I don't want to make overthrow comparisons but you definitely see a lot of Mahomes level things with Caleb Williams can he be a tr more of a, a guy that picks apart defenses like Patrick Mahomes can that's kind of the biggest question for me with Caleb Williams is where Mahomes like he can make those splash plays and what Caleb Williams does but he can also stay in the pocket get the ball out on time when it needs to I still need to see that more from Caleb Williams some of that's on USC's offense some of that also I think is on Caleb Williams that's my only big question mark with him but overall, I don't. I like the pick personally. If you're picking number one for the Bears, I, I really, you know, you could get Justin Fields probably at least a second round pick and then some. Arizona, Marvin Marvelous Harrison, or Marvelous Marv, should I call him, right? Gus Johnson. But Marvin Harrison Jr. to the Cardinals, no problem. I mean, this is a great pick. You're picking number two, Marvin Harrison. Is he Calvin Johnson? Who knows? I mean, he's he could be Megatron 2.0, I mean, not that level of of craziness but he's definitely in that conversation one of the best receivers we have seen in this draft Arizona no problem with getting another playmaker to go along with Marquise Brown especially if he doesn't come back and yeah, Michael Wilson then we go on to the Denver Broncos Drake May quarterback UNC I am a little tempted to not go with this route especially if I'm Denver I think Russell Wilson's contract you still want to go ahead and give him another year or two Look towards the future, rebuilding this team a little bit, right? I think that they can add talent across this roster for the time being. As Sean Payton gets his system down, gets his players in here, that would be my route. I would trade down if possible. I know there aren't trades in this, but that's what I would be looking to do is try to trade down if possible. If not, go take a franchise piece. Go take a, an Olu Shoshanawa, Joe Alt, or, you know, it just depends where you're picking, of course. But go take one of those blue chip guys to help build your foundation roster. Drake May, while I do like Drake May and I understand why he's being mocked top three, you see the talent there, all the tools are there. He's still very inaccurate at times. Like, you know, there's just too many misses. And this deep ball hasn't been as good this year as it was last year. I want to see him improve that. Scrolling along here, though, to the Giants. And they'll go take another offensive lineman, Olu Fashanu. Who? Fashanu onto their offensive line. Hey, I mean, Andrew Thomas, I mean, I'd keep him at left tackle. So you're probably saying, Olu, let's move you over to right tackle. And who knows if he can do that? Hey, obviously, I think he's got all the talent to be able to do that. At the same time, you just never do know. And you're also kicking the tires basically to Evan Neal as a complete bust. So I wouldn't do that. I would bring in a free agent to talk about this. I think you bring in a free agent at the right tackle position. And then if Evan Neal fails, you end up moving Evan Neal inside to guard. I would go after a playmaker here if possible. Brock Bowers would be a, a really nice selection. You could go after another edge rusher even, I guess. Dallas Turner. Definitely, maybe, there's, oh, oh my god, sorry to interrupt you, there's some squirrels fighting out here, unbelievable, they're going, oh, down goes Stranger up here, oh my, literally these two, now this third squirrel's getting in this action, this is wild scene, he hooks him with a left, he, oh, he, so, he jumps him with a right, if only I could show you this right now, oh my gosh, this is live, <laughs> oh, bro, okay, sorry, let's get back to the mock draft here. He literally just downed him with a ride. He went, he went like flying like this. 
<laughs> oh my gosh, this is one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Uh, if only I had a squirrel cam on this, but it, uh, let's get back to the Giants here. And uh, Olu Fashan, who is, uh, I gotta take a second to compose myself. That was one of the funniest things I ever, they're, they're calmed down now. But there were literally three or four squirrels all categorized right in the same spot by this tree and literally one threw a punch and he went down like flying unbelievable scenes over here man we had some wild action going on it's muhammad ali versus joe frazier out here but overall i actually like this pick even like you know hey he's the best player available at this point so if you don't want to get Brock Bowers, Olu Fashano, Joel would be great picks. And then, you know, like talk about it, you move Evan Neal inside probably to guard at this point, And you got to improve your offensive line in general. Like they still need help on that front five in, in desperate ways. So you could use a guard and Evan Neal, like I said, could move inside to guard and then a Fashano over right tackle. And then you got yourself maybe hopefully an offensive line with uh, some serious force. Let's go on to the Bears here, and Dallas Turner is off the board to the Chicago Bears. This pick makes a ton of sense. Let's go get a pass rusher. Let's improve this edge room. I mean, their defense has been really good, actually. I mean, they haven't faced the craziest opponents over these past few weeks. I mean, what, Washington, Raiders, and I mean, it's not been insane. However, like, their defense has been phenomenal. Like, they've stepped up in a major way, and I mean, Jalen Johnson's been an absolute beast out there, man. He's just... He's been really, really good, making tons of plays in their back end. I mean, oh, it's you know, it's been a it's been a group effort. Tremaine Edmonds, uh, I mean, Justin uh, Justin Jones had a heck of a play this past week versus the Raiders. Uh, Demarcus Walker's been getting pressure, so like they've been they've been getting after the the quarterback a little bit more. Uh, they still need another pass rusher, though. Seriously, they need another edge guy to get more consistent pressure. It's mainly been their secondary. Their linebacking core has been really good, too. I, I think getting Dallas Turner would be a phenomenal pick for them and, and would kind of stunt them right up here uh, overall, edge-wise. Then we get into the commanders. Joe Olt, tackle, Notre Dame. He's that blue chip offensive line talent that commanders could really use. And while I do really like Braden Daniels, I like Ricky Stromberg. I mean, Stromberg is more of a center prospect long term for them. And Nick Gates could also play guard, but um, all would plug right in there at the left tackle position. And I would imagine in this case, you do let go of Charles Leno, which they could do. He's getting older. And, and at this point, maybe uh, looking at a Joe Alt for the future would make sense. Even if you don't believe in Braden Daniels, if you don't believe in Braden Daniels, it depends on what they see in practice. But Joel would be a great pick. And Brayden Daniels could also probably play as a guard, you know, swing man or whatever, right? You can always use the depth on your offensive line. So I'm not going to discount that. Quarterback definitely is something in, in the cards for Washington. However, Sam Howell and also Caleb Williams are off the board. See, I love Caleb Williams for this team. I think Eric Bieniemy in the fit would be ideal. Like, I think that is a, a really ideal fit for Caleb Williams to go into Eric Bieniemy's system. But they would also have to incur trading up to number one and whatnot, which would be expensive. So if you don't do that, going and helping your offensive line, giving Sam Howe all the protection and the tools, I think makes a ton of sense. Because this offensive line really has struggled this season. It is also on Sam Howe, but it's also on this offensive line. And as I talked about, I think it's about 50-50 from what I've seen. New England Patriots... They go Brock Bowers. They go get themselves a super weapon in Brock Bowers in that tight end room, which Hunter Henry and also Mike Gusecki are both free agents. This one would make a lot of sense. You know, go get that difference maker in the tight end room. Well, they definitely need another receiving option besides Demario Douglas and Kendrick Bourne. Uh, Brock Bowers would give them that. And also Bourne is a free agent. So maybe, you know, that could be something that they, you know, figure on that they're going to need to also hope that, you know, take one Thornton or somebody can step up there. And also, I think the Patriots are going to be a really interesting team to watch out the quarterback spot. I still am wondering if they go after a quarterback in the first round. I think there's a really good chance they select a guy on day two. But First round will be very interesting. This is a team to keep an eye out when it comes to the quarterback. Do they try to trade up for Caleb Williams? Will Bill Belichick get a little, you know, desperate slash do something he hasn't really done before, right? And that's give away heavy draft capital and, and be aggressive and go up for a guy sort of thing, right? Typically, they don't do that sort of thing. So that's going to be something to monitor. Going and getting more weaponry slash offensive line help for Mac Jones would be a big priority too. And then moving on here to the Raiders where they go Kool-Aid McKistry. I actually think this is one of the most locked in picks. 
at the moment. Like if you had to put money, if I had to put money on one player going to a team, I would say the Raiders getting Kool-Aid McKistry. And it's basically for the simple reason, just like this, what uh, Jordan Reed says, they lack a true number one corner. And I think getting somebody in that secondary to help them out is a must need for this team. I mean, I guess they could go Drazon Newton. They could, they could go in different routes. Don't get me wrong. Like there's plenty of needs on this team. It could go offensive line. It depends where they're picking. But I do think Kool-Aid McKistry is, is a very likely scenario, especially if they're picking around this range. On to the Packers, J.C. Latham, the big strong bull. Nobody's getting through J.C. Latham. He is the strongest anchor in this draft class. He is an absolute brick wall. And the Green Bay Packers, you could always move Zach Tom over to left tackle. Have no issues with that. Help build their offensive line. I think David, David Bakhtiari, I almost said David. David Bakhtiari is, uh, is, uh, is probably, un is unfortunately, going to be a cap casualty in my opinion there's some frustration there i would imagine with the knee injuries and it might be best to part ways in general at least save some money in that department so jc latham makes a ton of sense tennessee titans nate wiggins cornerback i could see them doing this i, I could also see them going you know maybe keon coleman or a, i i like uh, malik neighbors i think neighbors could be a really good option for them too it just depends i mean i think you got three different categories i would be looking at offensive line receiver or corner. I think those are your three categories. Nate Wiggins has been phenomenal, man. He has been really good this season, and I think he's very much in the corner back number one conversation. I don't think it's locked up for Kool-Aid McKistry. McKistry's been up and down. He still has some areas he needs to improve upon, especially, you know, uh, turning his head, uh, you know, in, in, in phase and routes, but I, I mean, you look at the size profile of speed, I think McKistry, uh, you know, checks a lot of those boxes. Nate Wiggins also checks a lot of those boxes. Still has to get a little stronger, especially as a tackler, but he has all the tools to to be that guy on an island for sure. Uh, very, he's a loose athlete, especially for his size, being like six foot two. Uh, Nate Wiggins to the Titans, though, I think would be a nice addition, especially if they aren't high on Malik Neighbors or one of these receivers at this point. Slash, even a, you know, if, if you got all these three offense alignment like this and our Marius Mims, there's some question marks there. That could be something they, you know, you could look at a corner here. So I don't, I don't hate this pick. I do think receiver might be the bigger area of need, though, I will say. It's tough. I mean, the secondary needs some improvement, too. Indianapolis Colts, Keon Coleman, getting that outside uh, receiver if you lose Michael Pittman. I guess this would make a lot of sense, right? Um, I, I still, you know, I, I, you know I'd, I'd, I'm not as high on Keon Coleman quite at the moment of being like a top 10, top 15 pick. I have him more in the, like the 15 to 25 range is where I like Keon Coleman. Now it's just outside that. And for the Colts, you figure on, let's go get as many weapons for Anthony Richardson as possible. And, and I really do like that method. I still would go Malik Neighbors though. I'm just higher on Malik Neighbors than Keon Coleman. Everyone has a difference of opinions. So I understand that. Uh, other areas that this team could look at, I mean, you look at the cornerback situation, Nate Wiggins, and then also uh, Kool-Aid McKistry are off the board. But I think uh, Cooper DeGene would be an excellent pick here too. And it wouldn't stop me from taking him, even if you have Kenny Moore. Kenny Moore's getting a little bit older. Plus, Kenny Moore can play on the outside too. So I think, it, you know, drafting Cooper DeGene would be my ideal situation here for the Indianapolis Colts at this value. I think he's kind of like the best available player here for, for, a, for a big need for them in their secondary, getting another playmaker in that back end. You know, they've been better. They definitely have been better. They, I still think they need another weapon or, you know, another piece in the back end secondary. Tim Bay Buccaneers going Jared Verse. I like this one a lot. I did this one in my mock draft myself yesterday, and I think Verse is a really good prospect. I agree with this. I don't think that, uh, you know, the, the sack numbers truly tell the tale this season there at Florida State. I think he's been a really good edge rusher. He's been double teamed a ton. Like all the attention right now is on Jared Verse on that defensive line for good reason. And the Tampa Bay Buccaneers could use a nice pairing along with Joe Tryon Choyinka to go for the future. Shaq Barrett's been balling out for sure this year, but he is getting a little bit older. May want to think about that situation. So don't mind that. You could definitely look at also adding another weapon like Keon Coleman too if you want to replace a Mike Evans if he doesn't re-sign in free agency. I could see that happening too. And then we get on to the Bengals. Number 13, the receivers are starting to fly. Romo Dunze, okay, over Malik Neighbors. I'm surprised. He must, Jordan Reed must be a little lower on Malik Neighbors, and that's understandable. 
Uh, he's still got to work on his route running a little bit more, get a little crisp up. But I think Romo Dunze, really, really solid receiver. I don't know if he has like the crazy high end upside tools, but I think he's going to be a quality number two slash maybe a 1B type of receiver at the next level. He's just one of those guys that, as it says, he's one of the most well rounded targets that can attack all three levels of defenses. That's really what sums him up so well. His his ball skills are phenomenal. And you figure on, if you don't re-sign T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd's a free agent. What do you do with all those things going around right now? Go get another weapon. Get Jamar Chase, another friend. Romo Dunze on the outside. Or, well, technically, Joe, Bur Joe Burrow, another friend. So I don't, I don't hate this pick. Really don't. Definitely could also look at... Um, you know, depending on Jonah Williams, if he comes back, you could look at the defense side of the ball. Now, at 13, I'm not taking a linebacker personally, not right now. Uh, interior defense aligner, on Newton would be another pick that this team could look at. I think the value makes sense there, too. On to the Jets, our Marius man. Let's go. We need offensive line. I'll be celebrating over any offensive line, but hopefully, an offensive line that can stay healthy. Like, that's that's been our biggest thing, is we just can't get offensive linemen to stay healthy. I like Armarius Mims. I think he's super talented. I think there's a lot of rawness to his game. Is he a day one starter? That's a good question. But you could also maybe put him in a guard for the time being and uh, kind of go from there. And they just need offensive line help, like I said, in general. There's so many injuries, man. But hopefully, you know, tackle day one starter, right? They're going to need it. And then on to the New Orleans Saints. And the league neighbors falls right into their laps. I love it, man. Michael Thomas is getting a little bit older now. He's not as explosive as he once was. He's still kind of slant guy, which has always been, you know, really is his go-to. And then you got Chris Olave, who's really their number one. You know, we got a rest of what's going on, Chris. No, he's fine, man. No worries. Uh, Derek Carr has to get better. But to me, the big issues are stemming from the offensive line. I think the offensive line has just not been good enough this season. So I would be looking at improving the offensive line if I were them. Now, a lot of offensive linemen are off the board at this point. So it could be a little bit of a challenge just getting the best available player here. Malik Neighbors is a, is a really talented guy. And then on to the Arizona Cardinals. They go Jerzon, Johnny. Here's Johnny Newton. Getting another guy on that interior defensive line. I like this well. Another guy. They need anybody on that interior defensive line. As I like this one a ton. I think Jerzon Newton going to be an immediate impact for them up on their front four. Uh, and, and he's just a guy where it's like, he, he feels like a blue chip type of player. He may not be an insane athlete or have all these measurables that teams are going to look for. But he has some of the best tape in this draft, period. On to the Chargers. Kalen King, who definitely is going to take a little bit of a fall after this Ohio State game. He got beat. All right, Marvin Harrison's a tough opponent. I don't care who is going up against. I mean, it is really a challenge. And Kalen King got handed a little bit at times. I'll just say that. He got turned around multiple times. He's going he's gonna to have to improve his tape as the season goes along to solidify that first-round selection. At the moment for right now, I would say that he probably is in that round two conversation, late round one, probably late round one. I still think he's super talented, man. I think he's a really good corner, very versatile corner, but I would put him more in that late round one, early round two conversation at the moment. They do need another corner, and that's what I'll say. Now, Cooper DeGene is still available. I would go Cooper DeGene. Even if you say, hey, we need another outside corner, they could use a slot corner. I mean, Jazeera Taylor is decent uh, whatnot, but I, I would I would have no problems upgrading there and getting Cooper DeGene to come into the slot. And maybe even Cooper DeGene can play on the outside in the scheme. Then we go on to the Rams. They go Patrick Paul. Ooh. Okay, Patrick Paul for me. Uh, he's improved this year. There's no doubt about it. I still think he oversets at times, gives up leverage inside. Um, little his footwork. I think that's the problem with Patrick Paul. So I think he's a bit of a developmental project. I, I wouldn't like taking him here at 18 because then you're hoping that he's a day one starter. I feel more comfortable with a guy like Kingsley Suamatea at this point, or even Jordan Morgan. I feel a little bit more comfortable. I think Morgan's more of an early round two guy for me, grade wise, is what I would give him. I think Suamatea is a late round one conversation. I have Patrick Paul more as a day two firm cemented prospect. I mean, he's got the size. He's got a lot of tools you look for. I just think his footwork is uh, is kind of a mess at this point. So that that is a little bit of an issue. I mean, DJ Humphrey, that it's not a bad comp for him. I, I just don't know if I'd take him here at 18. And then we get, you know, we also could look at the edge rushers. I think Chop Robinson would be a phenomenal pick. I mean, the value, I know he's got the head injury, but hopefully he'll come back from that here soon. Uh, Chop Robinson would be the way I would go all the way. Or Leatu Latu, I think at this range, too, makes a ton of sense, even with the medical red flags. Speaking of an edge rusher, Atlanta, they go get an edge rusher. They get 
Braylon Trice, who's a really good football player. I, I like that. I just I would go Chop. All right, I think Chop has tremendous upside. And I understand between floor and upside, what do you do, right? Trice is more uh, dependable right now as a run defender. He's more consistent as a pass rusher with his hands, his power profile. Like those are things you know are going to translate with Braylon Trice. Whereas Chop, like he still needs to get more powerful, especially in his lockout in the run game. And he also has to improve his pass rush plan. Uh, overall, though, I think Chop has one of one level of burst explosiveness off the line that I would take a chance on Chop Robinson here at 19 because I think he can be, you know, like a top tier edge rusher, like a top 10, top five type of potential guy there. I'm um, not to say Braylon Trice can't be really good because I think he can be. And they do need another guy off the edge and he would fit that power profile mold. So I, I don't hate that at all. Uh, it would definitely help their defensive line. And then we go on to the Minnesota Vikings, who get Leatu Latu from UCLA. What a selection this is for them. And this is another one of those fits that I think is very likely to happen. I just could see this one in Brian Flores' defense. I think Leatu Latu is a perfect fit. One of the best hand swipe move maneuvers, you know, uh, guys, dependable technicians in this draft class. He is just so good with his hands and the way he gets off blockers as a pass rusher. So I like that one a lot for the Minnesota Vikings, one of the better fits in my eyes. And then the Steelers, Cooper DeGene falls to the Steelers. And man, this would be an awesome selection for the Pittsburgh Steelers to get a guy, plug him in right away on the slot. You got Joey Porter on the outside. Like this secondary would be a massive improvement. And he could play safety too, absolutely. I mean, him and Minka Fitzpatrick, you could work out some versatility there. I really like this fit. I like this a lot, man, absolutely. <laughs> Cooper DeGene at 21, oh yeah, no, sign me up. I understand, you know, fit-wise, you got to put that in there. I think he's borderline the best corner in this draft, like purely as a coverage guy. I think he might be better than Kool-Aid McKistry. I think he could be the number one corner. I, I wouldn't hate that argument at all. I think he's definitely in that conversation. Uh, and then, whoa -ho! Here comes the shocker. It's all oh, now he's coming with the right. The squirrels are back. No, but uh, this is a shocker for me. Brandon Doyle, who's been phenomenal this year for Oregon. And he's a guy that I like. I think he's definitely day two. Absolutely. I think he's in that day two conversation. I have him more as a third round guy at the moment, but that's just me. And, you know, these guys are professionals, man. They know what they're talking about. So they're not just doing this for clicks. In my opinion, they're not. I mean, maybe it's somewhat right. But at the same time, they, they're professionals. And at the end of the draft, you like to put in guys that are just your dudes, right? That's what you do. You know, in a lot of mock drafts, I do it. Everybody does it. At the end of a draft, sometimes you just have to put a stamp on a guy because you really like him. So I'm sure he really likes Brandon Doyle. Maybe he, you know, says hey, he's probably more of a round two, round three guy, but I really like him. I think he's going to be a really good pro. And I understand. Like, I think that's a smart thing to do. And I think Brandon Doyle is going to be a really good player. And he would fit that Draymond Jones. It's the only thing I would say is, is it a little redundant with what they have in Draymond Jones? Maybe. So if you're looking at defensive interior, I would go after him. I mean, ideally, a Jerzon Newton would be amazing for them. But at this point, uh, a Mason Smith would be a great option, too, for them. You know, big physical profile. McKinley Jackson's a guy I like a ton, too. I think he's in that first-round conversation. You got a lot of guys. I mean, Michael Hall has just a lot of flash. Now, that might be a little redundant again with the Draymond Jones sort of things. Tyleek Williams in the second round could make a lot of sense for them. They have him listed as an edge, though, here. So maybe, you know, more in that power profile sort of mold uh, you know, and I don't I don't hate that if it depends on how you want to see him there and Daryl Taylor is a free agent this season I've drafted heavily with Derek Hall Boye Mafe who's come along had a nice win on Paris Johnson this past week actually had a, a really nice rep on him but uh, yeah I mean I don't love the fit per se I mean I like the fit but I think with Draymond Jones there it's a little redundant going after a different skill set would just kind of be my eyes there and then we go on to the Houston Texans Ameka Abuka I'm, I'm okay with this one because you're getting another playmaker in there and Tank Dell and, Ke you know, I almost say Keon Coleman, but uh, Nico Collins, because I, I mean, that's kind of my comp actually for Keon Coleman, but Emeka Buka would slide into their slide. Just depends on how you feel about John Mechie, but you could always use another guy and getting another playmaker for CJ Stroud's not a bad idea. I could see this team going after interior defensive line. I think it's a very popular one. I like to talk about Mason Smith or a McKinley Jackson at this point could make a lot of value for them. I could see them going after even like a, depending on how late they're picking, maybe a Jeremiah Trotter. Even though the linebacking core has been pretty good, I will say that's been pretty good. It's not been bad, but Jeremiah Trotter would be pretty cool, cool too. Um, overall, don't mind this one. Offensive line too could be an option. You know, interior offensive line 
And then we get onto the Jaguars here, and they get chop, chop, chop. Let's go. Chop Robinson, really like I talk about, it. and he's an elite athlete. And the Jaguars, you know how it is with Trent Baalke. Oh, elite athleticism? Crazy tools? Let's go. And Chop Robinson is that. Like, he is absolutely that, man. He's a freakazoid. So getting another pass rusher, especially if you let Josh Allen go, then this would be an, an ideal selection. Even if you don't, Trayvon Walker can play on the inside too, and, and they can get creative with their packages. You know how that rolls with rotating guys off the edge. So don't I, I like the value at all a lot. And especially if, you know, receiver, I think is still a big need for them. I think interior offensive line is also a big need for them. And then we go into the Detroit Lions. JT to a Moa Loud on the edge for the Lions. I'm okay with it. They need just any other pass rusher, right? Besides Aiden Hutchinson on their defensive line. Let's get some pressure up to the quarterback. JT to a Moa Loud. Let's hope that they are going up against Penn State every week. <laughs> or he's going to play like that, right? But he, uh, yeah, JT to a Moa Loud. He's one of the... He's another one of these guys, to me, he's like a blue chip type of player. I mean, not in the sense like that he's going to be like an all pro season on, season in sort of thing. I didn't make any sense, but I think he's going to be a really good player. I don't know if he's going to be an elite player, but I think he's going to be a very, very solid player. And the Detroit Lions, they need a number two guy uh, somewhere on their defensive line. Like I talked about, whether it's interior, whether it's off the edge, they need somebody else to take some eyes off Hutchinson and, and get some more pressure elsewhere. Buffalo Bills, Cam Kitchens, uh, one of the more popular mock draft fits you're gonna see it's probably not gonna happen because every team's gonna say oh we know buffalo's gonna want cam kitchen so let's go get him before that happens so that's gonna be the thing there and cam kitchens though as that back end defender i think there's a real good conversation to be had that Kalen bullock is competing for that number one safety position tyler newbin it's a three-way knit i actually think while cam kitchens might have the higher ceiling I think Tyler Newbin and ha might have the highest floor. I think Kalen Bullock is also right there, man. He's had the best tape maybe of, of the three. Well, I think Newbin maybe has had the best tape so far. Kalen Bullock is at the second best tape. And then Cam Kitchens. Well, Kitchens also was injured for a little bit. He's back now. Uh, but uh, that did affect a little bit there. So, But Kitchens a really good player, man. And, and Buffalo could use another back-end defender, I feel like. And then the Dallas Cowboys, Kingsley Sumate. I love this one. This is a dream fit for the Dallas Cowboys in my eyes because now you can work him in at guard or at tackle depending on what you want to do with Tyler Smith and you just kind of roll with that. I think Graham Barton would be a good fit for them too. Just getting somebody to come in at that left guard position, maybe give you someone also like Kingsley Sumatea that, that way you know you can have swing tackle capability too. But I love Sumatea in this late round conversation. It's an absolute dream fit for me. And then the Baltimore Ravens, Chris Jenkins, interior defense lineman from Georgia. Maybe, uh, you know, John saying, hey, Jim, give me some hints out here. How's Chris Jenkins? Well, he's a, he's a dang good run defender, man. Has a ton of tools to be a great pass rusher. I am still more of a uh, round two, round three guy when it comes to Chris Jenkins. I think he's in that day two conversation. I like the floor that he has as a run defender, and I think he can get there as a pass rusher. But I need to see a little bit more in that department for me to catapult him into that first round conversation. It is somewhat of a need, though, I will say. I just would, I do like a couple of interior guys a little bit more as I talk about, like McKinley Jackson. I would take him a little bit higher on, but I do think Chris Jenkins has a really high floor, and it's not a bad pick. A corner also a big need, too, for this team, and I could see them attacking that position. Maybe a Denzel Burke would be an option. And then the Miami Dolphins going Tyler Guyton offensive line here. Self-explanatory. They need another offensive lineman. Austin Jackson is a, a, in a, he's, um, a free agent, so you could end up moving on from him. Slash, even if you re-sign him, you have versus so like he could go back over to left tackle. Like they just need more offensive line help because I think when you go up against some of these better defensive lines, it's shown like versus the Eagles, versus the Bills. Those are the games they struggle with the most. Isn't it funny? The defensive lines have been able to get after Tua consistently. So I think that is the biggest need as of right now for me. Defensive tackle could be a big need depending on Christian Wilkins if he gets re let go. And then on to the Eagles, Jordan Morgan. This is a Howie Roseman pick, you know. Go get me some offensive line. Go get some trenches somewhere. I went defensive line, double dip. Let's go get offensive line this year. Probably going to happen. Morgan's a good player. I have him more as an early round two guy, but this is pretty much early round two. And I think Morgan could play guard early on. Actually, I like him a lot as a guard. I think he might be, that might be his prime position at the next level. Um, just someone that I'm not 100% comfortable that he has the foot speed at the moment, watching some of his tape. But he's definitely a, a powerful guy. Got to improve his overall footwork, too. And then on to the 49ers, Kamari Lassner from Georgia. Ooh, improving their secondary some more. I mean, Demario Lenore has been solid. 
But Traverius Ward is getting, you know, to that point contract-wise, getting cheaper. Do they bring him back? Kamari Lasner would be one of those guys you could fit in there. And so, so I don't mind that at all. Actually, it's not a bad. It's a good fit, too, for the 49ers. I think he would fit their system ideally, too. And then finally, uh, you know, I mean, especially if offensive line talent is off the board, I think that would make a lot of sense because I could see them going offensive linemen. You know, hey, a shocker pick would be like uh, Malachi Corley, but don't be surprised. <laughs> you know, Malachi Corley could be a sneaky fit in the first round. Like, if you want to know about a shocker type of pick in the first round, could we typically see one shocker each year? Malachi Corley to the 49ers could be that pick, right? He is just an ideal scheme fit for them as a yak receiver. Uh, let's go into this next pick. Kansas City Chiefs. Oh, this final pick. That's right. Kansas City Chiefs, Troy Franklin, the receiver from Oregon. He has been really impressive this year, and he looks like he's filled out his frame a lot more. And you're talking about getting another guy on the outside who can win, be that deep ball winner, right? Raji Rice in the slot with his yak ability. I like that, actually. I think that's a really, really nice combination of receivers. I think, a, a, you know, another guy to watch out for on the outside. I mean, we talk about it depending on who's available, but Xavier Leggett would be a really good one, a fun one, too, with his speed. But Troy Franklin has been winning on that deep ball consistently. I mean, they signed McCole Hardman trying to get another guy to win deep ball-wise. And I think Troy Franklin would be able to accomplish that. And their need definitely interior defensive line, getting that pairing with, with Chris Jones. They've been looking for that guy for quite a minute, but haven't been able to find him. So that could be another option too for them. And then depending on what they do with Jerry Steen in the offseason, maybe cornerback could even be a need. So overall, hey, it was a fun draft, really did. I, I mean, obviously the most shocking pick to me was the uh, was the one, uh, what was it, uh, right over here, Brandon Dorless to the CLC Logs. That was the most shocking pick to me. But you got to throw in a, you know, you got to put in a little cement in your draft. Let me know what you think about this mock draft from Jordan Reed from ESPN. Nonetheless, I can't wait to see a Mel Kiefer mock draft here soon. I'm sure he's going to come up with uh, nonetheless. I hope everyone has a dope day, man. He's just like, I'm doing my thing, and I hope you are as well. Talk to you soon.